It's good to be together, amen? amen. It's good to be the church. It's uh, good to be the house of the Lord, and it's good to be together. If you uh, haven't heard this recently published story, uh, you might find it hard to believe it's true. In fact, that was my initial reaction when I first heard it. I thought there's no way that this could be true, but I, it was confirmed enough times that I believe it is. From age 11, maybe earlier, but from what I read, from age 11, a British boy became an extremely fussy eater. Anybody here a fussy eater? Anybody in your family a fussy eater? And he purposely avoided apparently certain food textures. I, all right, that's fine. But he became such a fussy eater that he lived entirely on potato chips, French fries, lunch meat, and white bread. Apparently he didn't overeat. And so on the outside, you'd, you'd never know. He looked normal. He looked healthy. Masking what he didn't even know was going on inside his body. By age 14, he was experiencing chronic fatigue. He was losing some of his hearing. And he was beginning to have some vision problems. And so, of course, they went to the doctor. And... Diet never came up in the middle of this. They were, they were trying to deal with the presenting problem. And sadly, by age 17, which I think is probably what brings us up to the present, he had developed a condition called nutritional optic neuropathy. And if, uh, if you don't know what that is, there's a doctor sitting in the back of the room. I think he could help you. No, I will tell you what that is. Uh, in other words, because he had deprived his body of essential nutrients for so many years, he had gone mostly blind, permanently, because the optic nerve is a powerful nerve, right, With that, that we need for our vision, and it had become irreparably damaged, and apparently had, he has become mostly deaf as well. And it wasn't because, actually, as from what I read, it wasn't because of the food he was eating. It was because of what he was not eating. And what he had deprived his body from, the nutrients that his body needed, who knew that that would lead to blindness? As we continue this week with our series focus and our mission statement, Helping People Follow Jesus, uh, we hone in on the second of three key phrases and three key words uh, which are behind me. The first was connect, primarily thinking of Sunday morning and, and, and the priority of being a friendly, inviting people, not just on Sunday mornings, but that's our main event in the week as a, as a community. Wherever we go, wherever we are, wherever we meet people, that we would be an inviting people because we don't always know when the Holy Spirit is going to particularly cross our path with the path of another person that he wants us to engage with. Isn't that cool when he makes that clear? And we look back and we say, wow, that was God that I met that person. And today the phrase is continually grow, continually grow. Hence the illustration. Uh, my heart goes out to that young man. Uh, I like fries. I like French fries. I mean, I, I, I used to love Doritos when it comes to chips. That was my chip of choice. Uh, but I like French fries. In fact, yesterday we had some fish and chips at a fundraiser. And, uh, yeah, I ate the batter, too. I, you know? <laughs> And in high school, uh, speaking of processed lunch meat, uh, when I was in high school, I loved to eat bologna sandwiches. That's just now, it's just disgusting. I, <laughs> unless you like bologna sandwiches, then it's just, it's a wonderful mechanically separated pig parts. It's great. <laughs> My 
My grandfather worked at, at Schneider's. But our bodies need vitamins and minerals. You know that. I know that. Our bodies need vitamins and minerals, which is why we need vegetables and fruits and grains and, and, and good protein in our diets. And, and, and even though we might look good on the outside, if we deprive our bodies of essential nutrients, we will be killing ourselves on the inside. Very sadly, I've, I've mentioned once before, uh, my precious sister uh, years ago stopped eating most food and it ended up destroying her body. Uh, that's what happens when we deprive our bodies of the nutrients they need. We are about helping people follow Jesus. Amen? Uh, we're about helping people follow Jesus. And I really like that phrase. And no, I'm not the one who thought it up. Uh, helping people follow Jesus as we authentically connect and as we continually grow. Now, life is full of choices. I don't know why that young man chose such a limited diet. But evidently, between him and his caregivers, and, and we don't know the backstory, I don't know what was going on, what challenges they were facing as a family. But together, they had made the choice for him to eat only simple carbs, processed protein, and fried potatoes in two different forms, apparently. The spiritual parallel is that we choose what to feed our spirits in our minds, don't we? Uh, we choose what's going to go in that is going to affect what we think and is going to affect what we believe deep down. Just as we choose to feed our bodies, we feed our spirits and our minds. And I believe it's important to emphasize the word we, uh, like that great little video about better together. Um, I mean, Evan did very well with the Frisbee. Well, that, that was a lot of fun. Um, but how much better it is when you got somebody else uh, who you can engage with and have, have meaningful time with. And so I invite you to the book of Acts today, to the fifth book in the New Testament, to the end of chapter 2. Uh, it's a great summary description of the priorities of the early church. They didn't have a Canada food guide, uh, but they knew what spiritual nutrients were needed uh, for spiritual health. And I, I, there we go. I was going to say I do have slides. There they are. Why don't you read, uh, I have two slides of, of text. Let's, let's read this all together, okay? They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property, oh, I'll do that, they sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Do you want that to be a description of Wilmot Center Church? I'm not sure if you like the idea of selling all your property. But the spirit of it all, yeah, that's what we want. We want to be that kind of a people who are generous, who are committed to the word of God, who are committed to prayer, who are committed to being together and doing things together. This morning, we're going to identify some key nutrients for us to prioritize as we help ourselves, as we help each other, and as we help people who are going to be brought into the kingdom of God. Some key nutrients. The first one is vitamin B, the Bible, or God's Word. Verse 42, they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching, and the apostles' teaching was based directly on what Jesus had taught the apostles. Am I taking it? Should I increase the amount? You know the word of God, this is a chewable vitamin. You like chewable vitamins? 
Those are the ones that I buy my son. Uh, he enjoys them a lot more than the, uh, the horse pills. One of my favorite verses in Scripture related to the Bible is Psalm 119, verse 103. How sweet are your words to my taste. Yes, sweeter than honey to my mouth. So that's why I say the word of God is a, it's, it's, it's a chewable vitamin. Now, when we go and we read a, a school textbook, we read in order to remember and get ready for the upcoming tests that are going to take place. When we read a blog, it's often to follow the journey or the thoughts or the insights of a person that, uh, who intrigues us or uh, who we're interested in. When you read other social media, it's often to catch up on what's going on in the lives of other people or to see what they've posted or, or to have a good laugh or, or to have a little bit of a cry, depending on what you watch. When we read God's Word, inspired by the Holy Spirit, we read it with open hearts and minds, asking, Lord, what can we learn from this? And Lord, are you saying something for our lives now? We do that when we open up God's word. We're saying, Lord, I want to learn, not for the test coming up, but I want to learn for the good of my spirit, the good of my mind, the good of my body, the good of my life. And Lord, what would you be saying to me right now for my life or for our lives together as we read the word of God together? Remember the importance of we. Yes, read it alone, but read it with your spouse. Read it with your family. Read it with your neighbor. Read it with a friend. Read it with your life group. Let God's living, tasty word read you and speak to you because it is living and active, the inspired word from the Holy Spirit, who is God. Uh, these days in my life, I have been blessed. I'll get texts and emails and messages from, from friends who just want to send me a scripture as a word of encouragement. Uh, you know how much of a blessing that can be when you do that for people? And the Lord speaks to you and says, you know, I, I want you to send this message of encouragement to somebody because they need it right now. Or he might wake you up in the middle of the night and show you something from his word or ask you to pray for somebody. And then, then you learn sometime later, it was at that moment when something very challenging or something very awesome happened in that person's life. The written word alone needs to be read and accompanied by an open spirit to the Holy Spirit to confirm the word and to further give rhema words, to be open to the rhema word. The word rhema is literally an utterance. It's a saying, it's a speaking, it's an uttering. So we ask the Holy Spirit to spiritually utter or speak a word that will always be consistent with the written word of God and it will be intended to speak spiritual health and growth into our lives, whether it's encouragement or whether it may be reproof that's needed for us to be sharpened in our walk. So vitamin D, that's the first one. Second one is vitamin D, daily talks with God or prayer. This coming week, as Brooklyn said, is our annual beginning of the ministry year week of prayer. The early church was devoted to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship. It was devoted to prayer. And let me encourage you that if prayer is not a regular part of your day, or you're not sure you want to pray out loud with somebody else, let me encourage you, prayer begins as conversation with God, dialogue with God. I've heard it said that in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, found in Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7, that in ch uh, chapter 7, Jesus describes three levels of prayer. Uh, whether or not you've ever heard this described this way in a particular passage. Level 1, Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. Level one being the idea that, like a child, sometimes uh, when we're early in, in our understanding of prayer, we just ask for stuff. 
And then we begin to learn, as our relationship gets deeper with God, Jesus says, secondly, seek and you will find. So that rather than just going to him and saying, "Uh, God, I need this or I want this, we go seeking and we're saying, Lord, so what do you want me to want? What should I be looking for, Lord? Please help me to find what it is that I ought to be finding so that I might learn that what I'm asking for when I'm talking to God isn't really where I should be in God and the Holy Spirit. He will direct us to be seeking after the right things. Rearranging our priorities as we search more deeply. And then thirdly, Jesus said, knock and the door will be open to you so that we learn Prayer is not just about one-offs, but as we get deeper and deeper into our relationship with God, we recognize that continuing, persistent, repeated prayer, like repeatedly knocking, is what God wants us to do. Not because God is, God is saying, I'm not listening to you, but saying, because I want that kind of a close, ongoing relationship that isn't just in spurts and starts, but that's ongoing. You will go deeper and deeper in your understanding and receiving a revelation from God, and understanding the word of God, perhaps in a way that you never did before, the written word of God, because of the spirit of God in you. And I urge you to begin your prayers and to intersperse your prayers with this beautiful thing called silence. We've gotten into such a habit of thinking that prayer is all about our talking. And I want to encourage you that, that when you first come to God, that, you, that, that the quietly you just be silent before the Lord and perhaps just uttering or thinking the question, Lord, is there anything that you want to say to me? Lord, what do you want me to pray today? And what a beautiful thing to be in silence before the Lord. We did that as, as staff this week uh, during our devotional uh, every week, most weeks when we get together. And uh, we spent six minutes uh, in silence. And, and for those staff who are here, I see Pastor Wade in the back. That six minutes went by so fast, I was annoyed when the alarm went off. But I was the one who said it. So, <laughs> And that's one of the beautiful things about being in the presence of God, that sometimes that silence is just for us to settle just for our minds to stop racing so that we can be silent and be still and know that he is God and we can go from there with him. Vitamin D, daily talks with God. Third one, vitamin C, is the importance of community. The community that we experience on Sunday mornings is wonderful. It's great. It's essential. I love to hear voices lifted in praise to God. When we are together, I love to hear voices giving praise and utterances of praise to God. I love to hear God's people clapping before the Lord and getting excited before him. Yet community together on Sunday morning, of course, can go only so deep. So I believe we all need a more personal gathering. We're not to give up the habit of meeting together. And that's not just about this. Just as the early church met together on a regular basis, they were breaking bread together, as that text told us. They were fellowshipping together. Every day they were meeting at the temple, and they were studying and hearing from the apostles, studying what Jesus had taught. And so, too, we want to come together on a regular basis for personal sharpening, for encouraging, for learning, for praying, even for confessing and correcting when we're with people that we trust. And in just a few minutes, I'm going to be calling up our our life group leaders, life groups being our small groups, our small group ministry. And our life groups are opportunities for meeting more personally. Again, sharpening, encouraging, learning, praying, confessing, correcting. And if you would say this morning, nah, that's not for me, I'm not into that, you know, getting with too many people and getting too, too touchy-feely with them, then, I, then I, I, I urge you to please just seek out one friend to meet with regularly. Because where two or three are gathered, Jesus says, I am specially with you. I believe we all need that personal meeting for those reasons. 
no matter how small the group is, because even when two people come together, man, you can, you can really cover some good ground and worship God together and pray together and be honest together. As was announced earlier too, I, I encourage you to come to, to Set Free this Friday and Saturday. Um, there's a cost to it. There are meals provided. It is $50. You can go online, go onto our website to coming events and, and find that. Uh, and you might say, that sounds like that sounds like it's for messed up people. You know, set free means you're, 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 you need to be free. And I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty well. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, I, I, I like my, my potato chips and my, my bologna. <laughs> but you know what? Even if it seems like everything is just right, that's great. Because this will only enhance where you're at. We're not saying you need, you need to come to set free only if you're absolutely messed up. It's like we don't invite people to come to, to marriage seminars because their marriage is a mess. Uh, we invite people to come to marriage seminars no matter where their marriage is at because it will be enhanced. Uh, there is some wonderful teaching uh, in Set Free about the Holy Spirit. There is some great teaching about bondage and about being set free. And my eyes were open when I went to uh, one of these seminars about a year ago is, is when I went, uh, just about a year ago. And I'm so very glad I did because there were some things that the Holy Spirit revealed in my life that I needed to speak out and I needed to be honest about and say, Lord, I want these broken in the name of Jesus. I don't want this in my life. So I encourage you uh, to come to that and to experience that bit of community as well. I have two more. The next one is vitamin A. And that's adoration or worship. Let me suggest to you two forms of worship. The first one is that anything that you or I think or say or do that is good could be offered up to God as worship. Because worship stems from our, our relationship with God in which we recognize God's infinite greatness compared to our completely dependent existence on God. And we recognize that we owe God everything for creating us and for reconciling how imperfect and faithful we've all been in our relationship with God. And he became one of us, only perfectly so, took our place, atoned for, paid for that sin Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. And then rose from the dead to prove <laughs> that God, that through Jesus, has power over everything, including the final enemy, which is death. That's one way to worship. Anything that we do or think or say that is good, we can make an offering of worship to God in our lives. And then secondly, explicitly revering God for who he is. That's what we do here Sunday morning corporately. You know, you could do that anywhere you are. Amen? I mean, some places you're not going to break out uh, but anywhere you can you can praise God or worship God anywhere explicitly revering God for who he is and praising God for who he is and what he's done now I don't make a huge distinction between worship and praise some people do that's okay but the reason I don't is because I understand that praise is one of many forms of worship. Because I understand that worship is anything that we can do to declare God's worth and to subject ourselves and to understand that we are dependent on God and to give God recognition of his worth. So I understand praise like prayer, like service, like so many things is a form of worship. And when I deeply worship God, though I may be on my knees and my face may be on the floor, I can be quietly offering God praise. They are inextricably linked together, worship and praise. And in both kinds of worship, may we be learning and moving in the reality of worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. That's a description that Jesus used when he was having a meaningful talk with a woman about what worship is. We may be worshiping together corporately on Sunday 
or personally, anytime, and anywhere. And in either case, we want to be free to worship as the Holy Spirit leads us, always guided by the truth of God, the truth of Jesus, the truth of the Word of God. And may we be filled with his Spirit. May we be continually filled over and over, and may the Holy Spirit even have freedom to baptize in the Spirit as well. Would you say amen to that? May we not, may we not prevent him from doing what he wants to do. And finally, vitamin E is exercising the gifts that God has given us Can you maybe back me up one, <laughs> please? <laughs> Vitamin E is, thank you, is exercising our gifts and service. In Acts chapter 2, in that passage that we looked at, people were amazed at the wonders and the signs that were being accomplished truly by God through the apostles because we recognize that anything that happens that's good comes from the Father of Heavenly Lights who is good. And this ties in with the first form of worship, our gifts and abilities. As we take something good and we offer it to God, we've all been blessed with abilities and skills. And every follower of Jesus has been given a spiritual gift or a few by the Holy Spirit. It might be quiet like serving or administrating uh, something back behind uh, in the background that you don't see very much. Uh, it might be a, a spiritual gift that's more up in the front, like teaching, like leading. Or it may be a very intimate and amazing encounter with God, like tongues or discernment of spirit, spirits. It might be something intimate like that. It might be something more outgoing, like prophecy or healing. Now, I'm, asking, I'm going to ask you to keep me accountable about something, will you? I've done this before with churches, and uh, nobody has said to me, and, and, but if you don't, I, I won't think any less of you, um, but nobody's actually come to me and said, hey, I remember you said keep, keep you accountable about this. Did you actually do it? So I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to keep me accountable about something. I have a goal but that by the end of October, I've given myself a fair amount of time, but by the end of October that we will have on our website a simple description of all of the spiritual gifts that we're aware of from, from, from the New Testament. So that you and I can very easily just access them. If you say, you know, I don't know what my spiritual gifts are. So that you could go to that. I mean, there are other places you could Google it too. But just for convenience sake, so that we have this little resource on our site. So that you could go and you can look through all of them. There will be around 20 of them. And you can read through them and you can do, do it with somebody who knows you well and say, what of these describes who I am? And what of these perhaps might I pray and ask God for and, and learn whether or not he will give it to me as a gift? Does it sound like a good thing? Um, and so by the end of October, if I haven't told you I've done it, be very happy if any or, or lots of you come and say, hey, did you do that? I'm going to help hold you accountable. So the Bible, God's word, daily talks with God, prayer, community, adoration or worship, exercise and gifts and service. These are great vitamins. These are great healthy interactions and disciplines and joy, joyous parts of our relationship with God for us to be having in our lives. I want to call up the life group leaders at this point, as I said I would. Our emphasis today is on continually growing. And one of the key or the main ministry that, that we would identify is saying, this is how together we want to be continually growing. Yeah, there, there are other things. There, there are other ministries. There are other programs. So come on up, Life Group leaders, as I keep filling in time. No, I'm not filling in time. Uh, but Life Groups come in many shapes and sizes. Uh, 
some of them are, 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 are really hardcore intimate and some are not. Uh, some are a lot, some are a lot more, uh, it might make you more comfortable if you don't want to get, get too, too intense. But you'll get deeper and deeper as you get to know people better and better. Uh, we have another goal. We have, uh, when, when life groups were, were restarted last fall, uh, I think about 150 people got involved in this. I read about 150 adults. And, uh, and it would be just wonderful by the end of this ministry season to see that we have about 200 people involved in life groups. You know what? It's not about the numbers. But when we say something like that, it reminds us that we do not want to stand still. We do not want to be stagnant. We do not want status quo. Would you say amen to those things? And, 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 and numbers are just an evidence to say, thank you, Lord, you're doing something. And the kingdom is continuing to expand, which was what Jesus said. The kingdom is among us. And we want that only to continue. So I'm not going to introduce all these great folks. Look at them, isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? So we have between 15 and 20 life groups. And you can go out into the foyer and you'll see they've been there before, but now they've all been refreshed. And you will see in the back corner uh, pictures of all the life group leaders and some descriptions of all the life groups. Now, not all of them. Some of them are, are full some of them aren't able to take in new people or they're, they're studying something that is intimate and so somebody just can't come jumping in and that, that, you know, that makes some sense uh, to join. And so you can see, or you can go on, now we have a page on the website of, uh, and somebody, because I keep going to W, well, if you go to wcnc.ca, that will get, get you to where you want to go. Otherwise, it is, thank you, Wilmot Center. Uh, church that's what happens when you bookmark something right you don't know what the address is uh, and we also have description there of, of of all the life groups and so i encourage you if you're not part of one to go there and if you say yeah but i don't know which one to join then give me a call uh talk to me or there are two other people who are are kind of kind of kind of my my top hench people uh, and so where are you so one is pat Okay, and Bernie. So make sure you meet Bernie Cormier and target him to ask all of your questions <laughs> after he gets back. Uh, or if you know one of these people and you say, yeah, you know, really our life groups as good as, as, uh, as are, are they really cracked up to be what they say, then talk to one, uh, talk to one of the leaders and, and ask them as well. I want to pray for you. Uh, I, I do want to highlight. I want to highlight one group because they had actually asked um, on Wednesday evenings because they're not here today. Not all the leaders are here. The Lang was uh, here on Wednesday evenings during Activate. This will begin in October, so it hasn't begun yet. But Activate is our midweek children's program on Wednesday evenings, and during that time, they're going to be offering a study on financial management. And I encourage you, again, you don't have to have your, your finances messed up to go to it. But if they are messed up, please go to it. Uh, the average Canadian is spending about $1.70 for every dollar they make. That doesn't seem right, does it? Uh, so anyway, it's a great study. And uh, I encourage you to come to that. It's going to be led well. And, uh, and one of the co-leaders is, is someone who knows her stuff very well when it comes to finances. And what a blessing to have that group of leaders. So let's pray. I want to pray and I want to uh, bless these wonderful leaders today. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we continue to come to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we lift you up as the perfect rabbi, Yeshua. And you are the perfect teacher. And as when you, when you were at the home of Mary and Martha, Lord, may we, may we have the heart of Mary who sat at your feet to learn and to learn in order then to do and to be what you would have her to be. And Lord, together, oh, we desire to sit at your feet. 
Uh, we desire to, together to learn more about you and to grow deeper in community. And so, God, I thank you for these leaders who serve in many regard, uh, many regards like pastors as they exercise, oftentimes, the gift of pastor and of giving care uh, under, the, under the blessing of this church. And so, Lord, we pray today, in Jesus' name, your blessing on each one of these leaders and those who aren't here today. And, Lord, I pray that your anointing would be upon them as they facilitate, as they lead, as they teach, as they listen to you, as they guide. Lord, fill them and continue, I pray, to fill them with your spirit as they give leadership. And God, I thank you for the many of them who say, I'm not sure why I'm doing this because I don't feel qualified. And I thank you, God, that you qualify them because they've been sitting at your feet and will continue to do so to learn from you. And God, we pray for your spiritual protection of them and their families in Jesus' name. And as, as the Israelites put blood over the doorposts at Passover, the first Passover time, Lord, we pray for the protection of these precious ones with the blood of Jesus and their families. Because we know that when anyone is on about serving you wholeheartedly, that the enemy will come after us in different ways. And we thank you, God, that there's no need for fear because we are protected by you. And so, Lord, God, I pray that you would draw among us people after people, Lord, that you would bring to mind those that we would say, yeah, they, they, would, they would need to be part of community. Uh, Lord, may we be an inviting people when it comes to gathering to grow together, and may we be continually growing in you. Would you bless this ministry, we pray. God, not for us, not for the sake of numbers, but God, for your glory, for your kingdom, and for our growth in order that we would be the disciples who are helping people follow Jesus as you've called us to. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you, everyone as you uh, enter into this ministry year. Amen. Yeah, let's give them some encouragement. I'm going to invite the musicians uh, up as we sing. We'll sing a, a song again that we sang. And as we do come to this song, I want to ask you this, this personal question when we talk about our spiritual growth. And that is, is there any junk food in your life that you need to get rid of. Uh, it might be harmful junk food or harmful something that you're taking in. It might be something you're reading. It might be something you're watching. It might be something that you're eating or drinking. And say, so, you know what? The Holy Spirit has nudged me and has reminded me and said, you know what? I need to get rid of this, this harmful activity. Or you know what? It might be harmless. It might be an absolutely harmless activity, but it has become such a preoccupation that it is pushing out some time that you could or should be spending with God or with community. And maybe the Holy Spirit would be bringing to mind something that seems innocuous or seems harmless. He would say, you know what, I'd, I'd like you to make a little bit, room, little bit more room for me and to set aside some of that spiritual junk food in your life. Do you need to pray with anybody today? I want, you, I want to invite you at the end of the service. Please feel free to come and to pray. We have a ministry team. I invite some ministry while we sing in, in our last song, as some of the ministry team to be forward so that we can be praying and pray with anyone who might come forward. Let me pray with you just before we sing our final song. Lord, I thank you that you have, even this week, you've identified some junk food in my life. Harmless, a harmless activity, but one that can take up more time than it ought to. And it can squeeze you out. So Lord, I thank you for revealing that and reminding me of that today. 
and calling me deeper. And Lord, for each of us in this place, uh, as you, Holy Spirit, uh, I thank you that you might say to some of us, you know, there's nothing. It's all good. Uh, and then we can, we can just praise you from the depths of our being. But, but Lord, I thank you that as you identify those things, whether they're harmless or harmful, that we can then make that choice to say, yes, I want that not to be an impediment to my spiritual growth and continually growing in you. God, again, it's your love. It's your love that has made it possible for any of this good stuff to happen in our lives, for us to be able to grow. Thank you for that reckless love that you would even give to us responsibility as the church to represent you here, but only as we let you lead us. So fill our mouths with praises now, God, I pray, as we sing to you once again. In Jesus' name.